What's going on hikers? In today's video, we are going through a bunch of don'ts when it comes to tenting. First thing is you don't want to buy the wrong kind of tent. So if you look around me, I have several different types of tents. Um, anything from the different season ratings to what the tent is made of to how much it costs, how much it weighs. It just depends on the purposes that you're gonna use it for. So if you're an ultra lighter, you might wanna go with something that is a little bit more light, like the tent on my left, which is the Duplex L. But if you're on a budget, uh, you might have to go with something that's a little bit heavier and maybe it's a little bit more comfortable too. Something like my Triarch 3 that oftentimes I go backpacking with my wife in. Or, you know, if it's just you, and you don't want to spend a thousand bucks on a tent, maybe something like this Sea to Summit TR2 would be a better fit for you. But you have to do your own research and figure out what kind of tent is going to be the right fit for the season that you're backpacking in, the size that you are, how many people are that are going, etc. Our second don't is not staking your tent properly. If you look down here, I've got a little surprise for you. If I move these leaves, you can see that the direction that I stake this tent down is facing away from the tent it's because the tension helps hold this string and then you can see there's a little notch on the stake so make sure you position the notch away from the tent and make sure that you lean the stake away from the tent because if you face it the other direction well you're basically screwed our third tenting don't is not finding a flat level spot in order to set your tent up a little hack that i use is taking my water bottle and making it into a level here i'll show you you gotta have a bubble in your water bottle, but you set it down and it looks like this is flat. It's pretty level, it's not foolproof of course, but it'll get the job done in a pinch. Also, you need to be drinking this water. It's important to stay hydrated whenever you're out tenting. And that is where the product that I use comes in. It is Element. This is actually a very special kind of element. It is the chocolate medley. My favorite is the chocolate raspberry, but they also have chocolate chai and chocolate mint. There's only three ingredients in here, so there's nothing added extra that your body does not need. I have a little recipe book that you could use in order to make yourself a nice hot beverage. Personally, I like to just do instant coffee mixed with a chocolate raspberry in the morning, and that gets my day started off on the right foot whenever I'm out on trail. So check out Element. You can use the website. I'll link it in the description below, drinkelement.com slash Jeremiah. That is drinklmnt.com slash Jeremiah. Click that link in the description and check them out. You can get a free sample pack with any order that you place. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support the channel. Our fourth tenting don't is not setting up your tent at home ahead of time just for practice. This tent, it is a little bit complicated to set up because you have to stake it out and you have to set a trekking pole to a certain height and then use that in order to hold the tent up. It's called non-freestanding. But if we take a look at one of these freestanding tents, the maker of this tent was very, very nice. Cedar Summit color-coded this blue pole to go into the blue grommet. And they color-coded the gray pole to go into the gray grommet. So this is a lot easier to set up. And lastly, if you look at the Triarch 3, there's a lot of crazy geometry going on here. And it has three poles. So it's really, really important to set this up at home and try it ahead of time because you can put yourself in a survival situation because if it's raining out there, it's cold, it's wet, it's nasty, you've never set your tent up, everything's gonna get soaking wet as you're doing that. And then you're at risk for hypothermia. Our fifth tenting don't is not bringing an essential part of your tent. Maybe you could store all the pieces of your tent together or make a pre-packaged checklist. While I was filming out here, I didn't stake my tents down. If I had forgotten these, I could have made some while I'm in the woods, but as you can see, my tents just basically took off while I was filming. And if that had been in the woods or the side of a mountain, I could have lost my tent for good or it could have been severely damaged. So make sure you bring every essential part of your tent. The worst thing you can forget is probably your poles or maybe a rain fly because then, I mean, your shelter is really hurting out there. Our sixth tenting don't is not ventilating your tent properly. This causes a lot of condensation above your head, maybe at your feet. You can get your sleeping bag wet or the water can drip down and wake you up at night because your breath, you know, it has moisture in it. So in order to vent your tent properly, it depends on the tent. Mine, I just have one of the doors open on this side and both doors open on the other side. 
Sometimes there's nothing you can do about the condensation. You're just kind of living in a cloud. Some tents are going to have vents at the top. Just make sure those are open. Some it's going to depend on how you pitch the tent. Number seven, if this looks heavy and a little bit dangerous, it's because it is. That could be you under this falling limb because number seven is not checking for widow makers before you set up your tent. Widow makers are basically just limbs and trees that are ready to fall or they've already fallen and they're just caught in the treetop somewhere. They're waiting on a good gust of wind in order to fall on your head. Our eighth tenting don't is not setting your tent up far enough away from others. See how my tents are set up really, really close? That's just for the video. If this were real life, I really want to spread those out because me and whoever's next to me are going to probably keep each other up at night. Maybe I'm going to bring some earplugs. But if it's just a random stranger, I really want my privacy and I would like to give them their space too. Sometimes it's tight quarters and there's nothing you can do about it. Or sometimes you just want to be close to your friends, have a little bit of security there. But personally, I say set them far enough away that you know you can change clothes, you won't have to hear each other if your phone's playing out loud, etc. Our ninth tenting don't is not setting your tent up in the right location. What I mean is it's winter time out here. Maybe I want to set my tent up somewhere where there's going to be some sun. Or if it's hot out, maybe I want to set my tent up in the shade. Or maybe I want to set it up near water or away from water. It just kind of depends on the situation that you're in. But be cognizant and aware of where you're setting your tent up because it can make the difference between it being 100 degrees in your tent and being nice and even chill in that tent. Number 10 on our tenting downs is not getting debris out of the way before you set your tent up. Grab you a stick or you can use your foot and scoot some of this debris out of the way. One other thing I like to do before I start setting up my sleeping pad is I fill around on the bottom of the tent under my ground sheet just to make sure that there's no rocks, there's no sharp sticks, anything like that that's gonna puncture a hole in the bottom of my tent and especially my sleeping pad because it can make for a very cold night if I don't have the insulation under me. 